Okay. All right. Uh, well, welcome to the library of Brother Jed Smock. This is one of my bookcases, one of many bookcases, scattered throughout various rooms of our home. It is in this room that also furnishes as the guest room in our home. Brother McKell often habitates down here uh, when uh, he is uh, working with us and we're working out of campuses in Indiana. Uh, this is one of my bookcases. There's a story to this bookcase. Um, when my parents moved to Terre Haute in 1946 and my father took a position as chairman of the English department at Indiana State University in 1947, they bought a home, an old home on uh, South 6th Street in Terre Haute and this bookcase um, was in the attic of the house. It, it wasn't a nice walnut finish like it is now. It was painted and um, it was never in prominent display in our home. I think typically we had it in the basement of our home uh, on South 6th Street and then later on when we purchased another house uh, east of Terre Haute. Um, I think at one time I may have painted this bookcase uh, kind of a, a grayish color and Perhaps had it in my room growing up for a while, not as filled with books as it is uh, uh, today forever. But uh, uh, Eldon Orr traveled in our ministry with us for several years. And one day, uh, well, I shouldn't say days, it took him uh, weeks to do this because we have another bookcase just like this one. But he uh, um, took off all the paint to remove that and had it stained this beautiful walnut. And so we're thankful for uh, Eldon uh, doing that. And now it stores a, a lot of my books. And I wanted to look at uh, just a few of the books. I have uh, frequented, I gathered so many books primarily because for years as I traveled on the road, especially in the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s, one of the principal things I did on weekends I'm on the road, I'm traveling usually by myself, would be to visit used bookstores. And uh, I would uh, usually, most used bookstores I went in, I would come out with a bag full of books. And uh, one of these I found in a used bookstore, I, this is in Davis, California. I suppose I must have gotten this book uh, 20 years ago. It has uh, the name of the bookstore uh, in uh, uh, Davis, California, Bogey's Books. This is a classic in Christian literature, The Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis. Um, here's a picture of Thomas A. Kempis. Uh, his dates are uh, 1380 to 1471. The title, The Imitation for Christ, comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Or in the King James Version, Paul writes, Follow me, even as I follow Christ. The New American Standard Version says, Imitate me, even as I imitate uh, Christ. Uh, follow my example. I think the New International Version says, As I follow the example of Christ. So Paul was willing to set himself up as uh, an example for what a Christian ought to be. And as a Christian minister, I ought to be able to set up my example and say to you that I'm teaching today, follow me even as I follow Christ. So we have to know Christ. And um, Thomas Akempis is this is a great book of devotional literature. You know, you find little prizes as you go into used bookstores. For instance, uh, this um, the inscription reads to Alexandra... McSwain on the day of her confirmation with prayers of her friend and rector. Um, I can't uh, read exactly his uh, uh, signature here, but the date is uh, March 14th, 1943. I was born in 1943. This inscription was made just a couple of months after uh, my birth. And, this book was probably in the family for a long time, and some estate 
came along the years, weren't interested, and ended up in a Christian bookstore. Now in a prominent place in my library. So I've uh, resurrected this book. I highly recommend that you read The Imitation of Christ. John Wesley, this is one of the most influential books in his life, was The Imitation for Christ. And we have the program of this confirmation. You find little tidbits like this in a used books for from Calvary Church, uh, 4th Avenue and 21st uh, Street. Uh, evidently, this is an Episcopal uh, uh, church, and it's got the name of the rector here. I can read uh, Samuel M. Shoemaker, Shoemaker, rector. I assume long ago he went on to uh, uh, his reward. But, uh, and I notice the Episcopalian church advertised both a Sunday morning and then an evening service at 8 o'clock. I don't know of any Episcopalian uh, churches that are having evening services anymore. Matter of fact, very few churches have evening services. When I started the ministry in the early 70s, many churches had uh, still had Sunday night and Wednesday night services. But alas, most churches just have uh, Sunday morning today. So, The Imitation of Christ. Uh, get that book and read it. And It's something I like to pull down from my library from nine to child time and just read a, a paragraph out of it or two. It's a, it's a good devotional book. On the top shelf here primarily consists of my apologetic library. Uh, uh, apologetics has been defined as the art and science of defending Christianity's basic truth claims. So apologetics is both the art and the science. These books deal with the science, the knowledge of defending Christianity's basic truth claims. When I go out on campus and preach to these college students who rarely have faith, they're secularists, they're naturalists, um, I have to use the arts of uh, apologetics as well in order to get and maintain uh, their attention. Most of these uh, professors who wrote these books, you might say, probably have a captive audience most of the time in their classroom. I'm not, I don't have that benefit when we preach on college campuses. This is one of my favorite books on apologetics. I begin to compile my apologetic library, I would say in the uh, uh, late 70s and, and early 80s. When I began the ministry, I did not know much about apologetics. I had my testimony. I know Christ had changed my life. I had read the Bible uh, extensively by this time, uh, read it through, of course, and, and memorized a lot of scripture. So most of my preaching consisted of reproving, rebuking, and exhorting. That's what Paul said to young Timothy. Preach the word. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But as I got educated in the Christian faith, I learned how to better intellectually defend the faith, give a, a reason for the faith that is in me. Initially, still on campus when we go on, we're initially in rebuke mode, appealing to their conscience. That gets their attention. But at some point in the afternoon, we hope to appeal to their minds and get them to thinking about Christianity and defending Christianity's basic True Claims. I think one of the books uh, on this shelf is, uh, has that very title. And this deals with the different approaches to Christian apologetics. So this is um, a very good uh, uh, a, a reference book. Um, in this book, I noticed he recommended uh, 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 Carnell's uh, An Introduction to Christian Apologetics. And as I sometimes do, I put notes in books as I've read them. Or should I have done more than that and put the date when I read the book and the date when I purchased the book? But I have here a, a quote from uh, Carnell. Uh, Faith is a resting of the soul in the sufficiency of the evidence. We don't have a blind faith. Our faith is based, based upon knowledge, evidence, and reason. At least saving faith is. Blind faith, I don't think, will carry you through this life or take you on to heaven. We have to have a, 
uh, a faith that is based upon reason. And, and so these books give a reason of why you ought to believe. Uh, Christianity can be and should be defended intellectually. Jesus taught you to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So these books teach us to love God uh, with our minds. So they're very uh, valuable and they're very helpful to you. The second shelf is my Finney shelf. I have, uh, of course, uh, a couple of biographies of uh, Finney, Charles Finney, uh, 1792 to 1875, revivalist and reformer. And then I've got uh, Finney's uh, autobiography in here. Finney's systematic lectures. I got several copies of Finney's uh, systematic uh, theology. Um, a key book that any Christian uh, should read, especially one who engages in evangelism, is Revival Lectures by Charles Finney. Uh, this was the first uh, Finney book that I read. This book was given to me by uh, Brother Max Lynch, who was my partner in the ministry here in Terre Haute, Indiana, as we went to the colleges and universities of America. Uh, here we have uh, most all of uh, uh, Finney's sermons are published here, one of the first editions. Uh, I like this, uh, was um, the evangel evangelistic sermons. Uh, it's um, uh, the publisher of this, was Kriegel Publication. Uh, and these were out, I think, by the, uh, I mean, by the 70s. These were very helpful. And Finney probably is the one who's influenced my theology the most and influenced uh, my preaching the most. And so this book that I took down this house deals with the guilt of sin. Uh, Finney always addressed the human problem of sin. It's sin that separates uh, a man from God. you got principles of the discipleship. Uh, this series was put together by uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Parkhurst, who I know personally. I used to attend theological uh, conferences with him. I've been out of touch with him for several years. So I highly recommend uh, uh, Finney to you. Uh, here, half this shelf deals with books on the atonement and the various views of the atonement. I favor the governmental view of the atonement. I should have my book in Notice I don't have my book in, in this section of my library that I've written on the uh, atonement, which is titled Christ Triumphant. So I've got to get a copy of that book in, in this bookcase. The rest of this shelf deals with uh, primarily moral government theology, the subject of uh, open theism. As a lot of you know, I'm uh, an open theist. I don't believe the future is determined. I believe it's open and the last shelf uh, is a set of encyclopedias. Uh, this particular set of encyclopedias uh, was written in 1914. Um, it's called the New International Encyclopedia. Of course, I pondered several times. This takes up a whole shelf. These are heavy books to move. My library, if I had kept all the books I've ever had, I'd have walls full of books and uh, this this room would be complete. Every wall would be covered uh, with uh, with bookcases. But each time we made a move in our married life, Cindy and I, I've always gotten rid of, uh, well, probably up to a fourth of my uh, uh, book uh, collection. Sometimes uh, I regret certain books that I no longer uh, have. Others probably uh, weren't worth keeping, but uh, so many, uh, you know, there are encyclopedias and major references books are all on the internet today. But this is a set, this set of encyclopedias uh, uh, came out in 1914. That's uh, World War One time. And so the, they're over 100 years old. And perspectives change uh, on uh, people who uh, think what is important to cover in an encyclopedia. Uh, and with the passage of time. So I've kept these in my library and sometimes uh, 
instead of looking up a modern encyclopedia and what it has to say about a particular subject or a person, I, I like to go to uh, uh, this old set of encyclopedias. So that's uh, bookcase uh, number one. Uh, many other bookcases I'm going to be introducing to you as we uh, go through uh, uh, the smart lecture. Uh, this is a picture of my grandmother's uh, uh, church on the Sunday school picnic. You notice here what I like is notice how all the ladies, even on the Sunday school picnic, they're dressed up. They've got their hats on. The children are well dressed. They're not going around like a bunch of uh, slobs, but they are ambassadors for Christ, representing Christ. This is a good picture book on the churches. This particular artwork, uh, uh, one of the favorite. My my father was a uh, had art as a hobby. He was a college professor, but liked to do art on the side. And, uh, this is an image of of the cross, his vision uh, of the cross. So thank you for visiting my library today and. Uh, maybe yet today I might have another entry, but over the next few uh, uh, days I want to introduce you to different bookcases in the Brother Jed Library. Hopefully you'll come and visit our home sometime and, and go through my books. You're welcome to. Uh, some books I have uh, uh, more than one copy. Um, these many books I have more than one copy, so if you're really interested you could probably talk me into uh, giving you a book that I have ex extra copies of. I suspect my oldest daughter, Evangeline, uh, she's the bookworm in our family. I think her, her book uh, uh, collection is getting uh, really, really comparable to mine. And she's going to, um, probably the one who will inherit these books someday. I don't know where she'll put them all, and I think it would probably uh, be much to the chagrin of her uh, husband, uh, David. Uh, these books, these encyclopedias I may have mentioned were uh, in my uh, father's library, but all these other books and the uh, other three shelves of books I've either bought at a used bookstore or bought new over the years. Uh, God bless you. Remember this. The Bible says, of making many books, there is no end. In much study is weariness of flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is the whole duty of man. For every work shall be brought into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And any book that doesn't teach you to fear God, that's the beginning of wisdom according to Solomon. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. To depart from evil is knowledge, is understanding. Any book that doesn't teach you to fear God, you might as well burn, quite frankly, because uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's the starting point. Amen.